there is nothing so strange and unknowable as worldly life. Who can tell how happiness comes and how sorrow comes? The sky has been clear for a long time. Suddenly the dark clouds gather and the eight directions are surrounded by darkness, thunder thunders and lightning flashes caught a koto. Sometimes it seems that the wind has gone out of the world. The leaves of the trees are also motionless. Suddenly a whirlwind comes from nowhere and blows. Huge trees are uprooted at its speed. The lush green oases that stood in front of the sky have now turned into an Ahsoka forest destroyed by an Umar. Such a whirlwind was now swirling in Kundave's life. Until recently she was unaware of anxiety. Life has been a non-stop joyous celebration. The days were passing by when I thought life was love and support, dance and song, epic and painting, band and decoration, Udi Yanavanam and Oyera Odom. Father and mother, elder brother, younger brother, ministers, teachers, nurses and friends treated the younger Brady as the apple of their eye. She knew what tragedy was through imagination in epic and drama. When such a blessed person began to suffer, one after another came crashing down. Father's condition was critical. A great trial had come to the kingdom. Tomayan and Tambai were in distant lands. Soothsayers and soothsayers kept mysteriously saying that an unspeakable calamity was about to befall the Chola clan. Secret conspiracies were going on in the country. The people of the country were in an unknown panic. Kundave, who was born in a clan that came through the path of diamond-chested warriors, had the courage to bravely cope with this. She had a firm belief that all the dangers to the clan and the kingdom could be overcome with the support of her sharp mother. But a small incident in her life, an unexpected encounter, causes her diamond heart to lighten and demoralize her. When Kundeva met Vandiyadeva, the lotus of her heart, till then a bud, blossomed. But what a misfortune! At the same time a caterpillar entered the flower and began to shed its delicate petals with its poison. Mama! What a pain! How painful was the thought that the ape warrior might be imprisoned! How did the deadly word that he might have been killed tear her heart apart? How much did she have to suffer not to show it? If there are so many people who have been born, born together, have friends who are alive, about someone who is passing away, about someone who has met two or three times by accident, why should this heart beat like this? Now is not the time to think about all this, to analyze causalities and draw conclusions. Without looking at me name sham, without looking at omens and omens, inquire immediately what needs to be inquired and do what needs to be done immediately. So that very afternoon she sent the younger bratty to the little gardener's house and left. The matros of that mansion eagerly welcomed the younger Prati and treated him with love. After talking with them for some time, the princess went to Chitra Mandapam. There the little gardener was waiting and welcomed the younger Prati and tried to explain the pictures spread in the hall. Kunta also came watching and listening. When the last image came to a halt, Kundave looked up at Kalantagakangdar and said, Sir. The Palyavatarayas have rendered unparalleled service to the Chola clan for generations. She said. Mother. That is our privilege, said Kalantaka Kandar. There is no doubt that this Chola empire was the reward for all that service. Mother. What word is this? But can't they wait until after the emperor's life is over and Kailasa is in power? Is there such a rush to seize the imperial powers? His face showed that these words shot like sharp arrows into the heart of Kalantaka Kandar. Beads of sweat stood on his forehead. Mustache throbbed, hands and feet were shaking. Kalantaka Kandar wiped the sweat from his forehead and looked at Kundave, Mother. Why is this so fierce? Do you intend to send me to Yamaloka just for the sake of saying? Said. Sir. You yourselves know that I do not have such power. Is Yamane afraid to approach Kalantaker? Can a demon woman like me do that? Mother. Instead of uttering such deadly words, you can pour ripe lead into my ear. What wrong have I done to make the goddess show such mercy? Who am I to tell them their fault? You should tell me what was my fault. Is it my fault that the man sent for the herb to cure my father's illness? No, ma'am, it will never go wrong. 
Do they know that I sent the old doctor's son to bring herbs to Kadakare? I know, ma'am. Today I saw that doctor's son tied to a rope and dragged along the road by your horseman. Did you give the order? Did you make this arrangement knowing that I was the one who sent him? Yes, bratty. But could they not have sent him without knowing that he was one? An old doctor's son? Something? Are you asking me to believe that story? Mother. Is it to be believed if he himself has confessed? The princess was a little startled and asked, Did he himself confess? How so? Confessed to what? She asked. He admitted that the other person who came with him was one. He admitted that the other person had not really set out for the herb and that he had carried the letter to someone in Sri Lanka. He is a great fool, he must have been up to something. I am the one who sent the other man who went with him. Don't they know that? I know, mother. But I also know that the man has deceived them. That young man named Van Diathavan is really one. No. He is the one who brought my Tamayan's letter from Kanchapuram. Princess. He brought the straw from the emperor and the prince, so what? The spies must do their work by adopting some trick like this. Sir. What is the taste of Vandiyathevan Atran? If he is not alone, I will stop walking in the royal palace and walk in the crossroad. I will go to the astrologer and ask about the horoscope of the emperor. I even asked the fortune teller about the emperor's horoscope. So what? You, the rich daughter of the emperor, ask something different. It's different for an unrelated passerby to ask. Only if you are an enemy of the enemy would you ask. This is their speculation, is there any other reason? He could have publicly sought my permission and entered the Tanjore fort. Why should he show the seal ring of Palyavar without doing so and enter? Why should he lie that the great Palyavatere gave it? Who gave behind the signet ring? It's not known yet. We have to find out. What did your men do when they couldn't find it? Mother, my men are not wizards. Can we find out how the signet ring came to him just by asking him? What is certain that he will tell the truth? There are ways to make him tell the truth. Mother. There is an underground prison. One knows this too. That is why he again went into hiding and fled from the fort in the dead of night. Sambuvarayar stabbed his son in the back and ran away. What's the proof that he's the one who punched me? That's what Kandan Moran said. That's not enough. I say he didn't stab Kandan Moran. Mother. Have you seen them up close? I haven't seen it but I can determine whether a man is guilty or not by looking at his face. That wicked one is blessed. He has somehow won their good opinion. I am not blessed. Sir. Why do you call him single again? Mother. If it is not for him, why does he enter the old town with a mask along with the goons? Why does he disguise himself and travel to Kadakare Harbor? If it is not for him, I will hide in Kadakare for a whole day when I see my men. At night, I will board a boat and go to the island of Sri Lanka. Oko. Did he get on the boat and get away? Couldn't your men catch him? Yes, mother. That illusionist has deceived my men and is gone. These fools have left him and taken the doctor's son. Sir. Let one go at any rate. I have sent for the doctor's son. He is certainly innocent. He must be released at once. Mother. He has been an accomplice of Atran, even if he is not one. He has deceived my men by telling some false stories. He has helped Atran to hide and escape by boat. Be that as it may, the doctor should free the son. I am unwilling to accept that responsibility. Dangers surround the country on all four sides. Enemies are waiting to invade. Vera Pandian's danger-relieving servants have vowed to impregnate the Chola clan. Conspiracies are going on all over the country. Sir. If all the conspirators were to be put in jail, there would be no room in the jail. Shouldn't you put it in while there's room? Leave a little room to put the real conspirator in. Sir. Release the doctor's son at once. 
I can't take that responsibility, mother. Will you obey the emperor's orders? Will you ignore that too? Ma'am, this does not require the order of the emperor. It is a world-renowned message that whatever the young brat wants, that is the order of the emperor. Here I hand over the keys of the underworld to your hands. Go and open the door and set them free. Even if you have to free someone else, do it liberally. You will be responsible for the profits and losses that come from it. Saying this Kalanthay Khandar took a big key. Kuntava restrained his raging anger and said, Come on, sir. I will take responsibility for the profit and loss. She got the key. If anything great happened to this Chola empire, it was because of two women, said the Tanjore fort chief. I am one, is that another woman? Pavur's youngest queen is Nandini Devi. Kuntave smiled understandingly and said, Are you taking me with the dictator of the Chola Empire? If this falls on his ears, the great corrupter will make himself a nation. She said that. It will go very well. I am waiting for it, said the little gardener. <laughs>